Hi, we're here today with Dr. Ken Ellick. He is medical director at MedPoint in South Bend, Mishawaka, and Elkhart. Dr. Ellick, why are we talking about testing still? We still get a lot of questions about the testing. Um, you know, what does a positive test mean? What does a negative test mean? And we still talk to a lot of patients who, when they get a negative result, even if they have symptoms, they're relieved. And we have to explain to them that a negative test is just a negative test. It doesn't necessarily mean you don't have COVID-19. It just means that it's less likely and you still have to follow the guidelines. So I thought it was important that we kind of talk about um, the different types of tests and why we do them so that hopefully people have a better understanding of what an actual positive and negative mean. Okay, so let's talk about the CDC guidelines and COVID testing strategy. So basically the strategy has a, a couple arms. One is, you know, what we do at the hospital. We're bringing people into our hospital. We want to try to do the best we can at identifying who may have this virus in their nose. And so we test them. And it's not because they're having symptoms, because if they have symptoms, we probably wouldn't let them in for surgeries and other kind of elective things anyway. Um, but if they're, they're negative, then we still allow them to come in, knowing that there may be some people who have this virus in their nose, which is why you still have people wear masks and do all the other stuff that you're supposed to do. Um, the other reason we do it is because people like to know whether or not they have this so they can let other people know. And that's where a positive test is the most helpful. Knowing that, no test is 100%. And so even if you have a positive test, it doesn't mean that um, you necessarily have it, but most likely do. And if you have a negative test, then it doesn't necessarily mean you don't have it, but you most likely don't. So talk about these two. So first, yeah, we would have, you know, when you test positive, what does that mean? And what should you do after that positive test? So when you have that positive test, it's most likely that you have COVID-19. And it depends. If you haven't had any symptoms, um, you need to wait 14 days to see if you develop any symptoms. And you need to be quarantined, isolated from everybody else during that 14 days. And it's kind of weird, but if you have symptoms, um, then it's only 10 days from when the symptoms started and 24 hours with no fever, without taking any fever-reducing medicines, and you're feeling better. So 10 days with symptoms, 14 days without. Correct. Okay, so that's positive. Let's go to the negative. You've had a COVID test and you get a negative result. What does that mean and what should you do after you receive that negative result? So the biggest questions that I ask for people with a negative result is what was your exposure? So if you have somebody who has a negative result that had no exposure, then their likelihood of having it is really low. If somebody had an exposure, and there's a couple ways we define exposure. One is that if you've been within six feet of somebody without a mask on in a poorly ventilated area for 15 minutes who you know had it, then your negative test um, may not be a true negative, and you still have to follow those guidelines of 14 days to see if you develop symptoms. If you have symptoms, you still need to be isolated for 10 days, feeling better, no fever for 24 hours before you go out with your mask on, washing your hands frequently and distancing from other people. Okay. Who should be tested, Dr. Ellick? Um, when should you be tested? And what should patients do after they have been tested? I mean, that probably, uh, again, depends on whether you have a positive or negative test, but who should be tested and when? How do you know? So if, if you've had a significant contact, um, then you may want to be tested so that you know to stay away from other people. If you have symptoms, you want to know so that you can let people around you know. And the biggest challenge we've had with that is that the contact, what we call contact tracing, which is letting the people know that you've come in contact with that you were positive, is only helpful if it's within three days of having the test. So if you don't get your test result back within three days, then that contact tracing is almost impossible to do. Um, and if you are tested positive and have no symptoms, again, you have to wait those 14 days um, before you go out with everybody else to see if you develop any symptoms. Okay. Main message that you would give the public, give the community, if you are confused about testing, if you, know, you have been in contact, haven't been in contact, you've been in distant contact, I mean, there are just so many variables. <laughs> What message do you really encourage or, or give to the community and encourage people to do if they have questions? So if you have questions, talk to your doctor. 
um, you know, at Beacon we have a hotline that you can call. And the main thing to remember is that the, the testing isn't the be all end all of everything. Um, that you need to, you know, monitor your symptoms and let those kind of be your guide as to what's going on. Um, no test is 100% accurate. And so you need to watch what kind of symptoms you're having and know, you know, what your contacts are and always, Wear your mask when you're in public, stay six feet away from other people, wash your hands frequently. And the biggest thing that I see people do all the time is touching the front of their mask. You should never touch the front of your mask because that's where all those droplets and if there are viral particles out there, that's where they, they land. And so if you're gonna mess with your mask, mess with the strings in the back and touch the things in the back, but don't ever touch the front of your mask. And the other thing is what we don't know about this virus, because we're just learning as we go along. So we're not really making things up as we go along. It's we're learning about this new virus is that you may be able to get it again. So there's a, a virus called respiratory syncytial virus that kids get, and you can get that throughout your life. It's not one of those viruses where you get it, you develop immunity, and you never get it again. So we don't know. This virus may be one that you can get over and over again. Well, Dr. Ellick, this is today's snapshot and what we know today about coronavirus and testing. So appreciate your perspective and wisdom and guidance today. You're very welcome.